Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalay the Don. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match is going to be between Anarchid and Aquanim on Fairyland. This map should be familiar to those who have watched fairly frequently, and it is well, it's pretty standard map nowadays, come to think of it. I mean it's it's a bit more defensive than a lot of other maps. Not as open, but you have the two ramps coming into the main base, and then a few more ramps, and then a bunch more cliffs and ramps. It's more of a StarCrafty map for as far as Zero K maps go. Granted, so is the last one, Ackland Wastelands. I mean, Ackland Wastelands is a StarCraft 2 map. It's not called Ackland Wastelands in the game, though. It's something else. I can't remember the name offhand. But it is... I don't think this one is. It might be. It's definitely built like one. At any rate, both players going for Cloakybot Factory. Aquanim with a few more early glaze than Anarchid. Sorry. Yeah, Anarchid with a few early glaze than Anarchid. And Aquanim going for early warriors as well. Not too confident about their ability to... Either not confident about their ability to do raid, anti-raider raider games, or just not having the patience for it right now. So going for warriors instead. Which will force Aquanim to... Sorry, force Anarchid to go for Rockos. And at the same time, Aquanim is actually able to get out of that fight alive with one Glaive living, and that's a huge advantage. Anarchid deciding to back off from that. But Aquanim with the center control for the moment. Then at least we'll be able to keep that. No real rating, though. Not not going to go in and try to kill a Conjurer. I mean, if they did, that would be huge, as always. But they're not. And actually, at the same time, Aquanim not even building a Conjurer themselves. They don't... Oh, so, what am I saying? I guess they have. That, sounds, that, that can't, sounded weird coming out of my mouth, and I was right to think it was weird. They are, in fact, building Conjurers. However, Anakin's also building up Warriors, so neither player really wants to go for the straight Raider-Raider game. They want to go far more for dedicated anti-raider and probably into skirmishes pretty soon. Anakin going straight into scythes from there. Akunum, on the other hand, back to the glaives. So Akunum probably going to be... I mean, they have some decent map... Center of the control... Center map control. Now going for the assaults, not going to be able to do anything. Anarchid is building a one extra defender over here. This... This is kind of unnecessary, but they are going for it just in case. They're not sure what Akunum is going to do. And Anarchid should be able to see that there's not much coming in right now. They don't know for sure what else is coming in, but they should see there's only the three-ish glaives around their base. That's it. There's nothing else. But I'm not surprised that they're a little bit wary. It is it is kind of harrowing. You don't want to get too much into a risky position. At the same time, down goes one of the defenders. I mean, with that warrior, this two defenders kind of make sense, but I still feel like Anarchid was forced to spend more money than they had to on defenses. However, with the scythe coming in, things could change quite quickly, depending on what the scythe attacks. I almost expect the scythe to just go around, try to avoid the army entirely, and then hit stuff in the back of the base. And it looks like it is indeed trying to avoid the army. Anarchid not even bothering to engage them head on. Now, Alcanum does have a slight metal advantage. That's worth pointing out, because Anarchid just now building up here. Actually, Alcanum with a massive energy advantage as well. Anarchid not able to spend all their metal. So really, it's effectively a 5 metal per second advantage in Aquanim's favor. And both warriors are now dead. Rest in peace, warriors. That's... Is that it for warriors? Really? That's... That was it. Both of them both of them down. So at this point, no side really has an easy way of getting out of any major conflicts. And Anarchid looks like they really wanted to get rid of that glaive. However, they are going to be able to get rid of this conjurer without any issue. And there's the hit. There's no saving that conjurer now. So the first Conjurer kill goes to Anarchid, although Akunim way ahead as it is economically, this is a bit of a blow, but not a huge blow. I'm not going to say it's going to win anyone any games right now. However, the Scythe is about to get itself killed by becoming visible way too close to a bunch of Glaives, although on the same time... No, never mind, it's fine. What am I saying about to get killed? It's going to live. You know, one-shots Glaives for one thing, which is very handy, but also it's... Basically just luring those glaives to their death. That was half a dozen glaives that just died right there from Aquanim's side. And while Aquanim does have the economic advantage, that's not going to help much. Okay, the Rockos are going to be useful, but uh, if there was another warrior, that would help a lot against the Scythe. And of course against the the attendant glaives. Aquanim with the Scythe of their own, so deciding to respond in kind. I guess that kind of makes sense. I mean... You've just been hit by a hidden force that got rid of one of your conjurers and stalled some of your expansion expansion attempts. You might as well see if you can do that to your opponent. Or maybe just go for their main army, or just scare them a bit. Where the heck is Anarchid's Scythe anyway? Can't be dead by now. 
Why can't I find Anarchist Scythe? What the heck? Oh, there it is. Like, it, it did not die. I know it didn't die. It is, however, going to. Because it is walking into a very unwise position right now as it approaches these lotuses. And at the same time, Anarchid's Glaive attack not doing much either. Aquanum pretty solidly ahead. I mean, Aquanum I still feel like is in a position of advantage somewhat tenuously. Gotta be honest, I don't expect that if Aquanum loses a fight that they're gonna be able to easily claw it back. They got their advantage by playing safe and by making sure that their opponent, whenever they try to attack, does not manage to do much. As long as they can keep that up, they should be fine. Because, I mean, a 4 metal per second advantage isn't that big, especially given that Aquanum isn't using all of it. In fact, they're only using 10 of it. So, at this point, Anarchid effectively has an economic advantage. They have a production advantage, but with 21 build power going into the... Well, roughly 21, like 16 when you consider the other construction going on, but still. Now, well, 17, 18 build power compared to 10, uh, 15. Will soon be quite a bit more. Aquanum will be able to turn their economy into something very useful in a moment. But, but for the time being, not so much. And, oh, no! Wow, those hammers completely wasted. Highly unfortunate for Aquanum losing those hammers to the warrior, but that's kind of what happens if you're not careful. And also losing the Conjurer because the Rocco decided to shoot at an inopportune time. That doesn't really matter. It looks like that is going to be fine. But Anarchid still managing to take this chunk of the center very solidly, setting up, setting up half a dozen defenders, because why not? And continuing to set up more defenders, because once again, why not? Just set up all the defenders until a warrior comes through, or Zeus comes through and busts the whole thing down. Same time, Akron's commander taking a lot of damage. Probably... Will it survive this? I... It might. If it gets a, got another good shot in... Oh, no! So close! That was... That was painfully close to living it. Yeah, Akron even in the chat in the original game goes, What? Really? That seriously died. It was... That was one or two good hits like if it if one of those units had died a little bit sooner like a fraction of a second sooner the commander would have survived that hurts at this point anarchid basically has the economic advantage has the control over the center this section over to the northwest is pretty much dead as soon as anarchid puts any real pressure on it it's done and aquanum realizing this sending a couple conjurers over to the north both to reclaim the commander and probably also to fortify it a bit better. Because at this point, Anarchid's going to be starting to run roughshod over Aquanum, given that they pretty much can. I mean, not totally, but Anarchid, now that they have the economic advantage, they have the positional advantage, they have something of a military advantage. It seems like Aquanum's really trying to just rebuild themselves after losing all of that, well, all that commander. But still, that was a decent chunk of their economy, and more importantly, it was a lot of their power to set things up here. And Aquanum, of course, going for the Caretaker, because Aquanum always goes for Caretakers for reclaiming. I mean, they've gotten a bit better about not doing it when it would be more efficient to do just the workers. But in this case, it actually makes sense to use the Caretaker. Get the extra reclaim. There's enough production at home. I mean, there's potentially 45 build power right here. Yeah, 44 build power right here. So it's no problem. They can get whatever reclaim they like. They have enough energy to make an extra 20, 20 metal per second work. They'll need a few more power plants to really make that work for a long time. But the problem, of course, like I said, is pressure. Anakin applying that pressure over to the eastern side of the map, forcing Alcanum to retreat, losing a couple of metal extractors, and they forcing the hand as far as actually attacking goes. At the same time, Alcanum, they have the air factor, as I mentioned. So I went over, didn't quite mention. Gunship plant just being finished up for Anarchid. So Aquanum, I'd say, has the advantage. They are getting Thunderbirds, which will at least stem the tide. If not, completely reverse this, because Thunderbirds can do that. Thunderbirds are amazing units when you have other units to have support for them, because then the Thunderbirds come in and stop your opponent from doing anything, as we will likely see demonstrated right now against the Scorcher. Well, hey, actually, no. Never, sorry, against the Stinger. But at the same time, the, there goes the Sides. And actually also scattered out the entire army, so with Aquanum's new knowledge, they're probably not going to attack too much. They didn't quite manage to stun out the Stinger, so there's not much they can do. It was a good idea to stun the Stinger, though. Just because the Zeus and the Warriors are going to be rather hampered by it. 
at this point. No Swifts, however, no apparent knowledge of the gunship plant from Anarchy. Akinem not guessing that there is, in fact, a gunship plant. But Akinem with that reclaim. They are getting the reclaim, they are getting that extra metal, and they are using it. They are setting up their army a bit more strongly as a result. So all they need to do is get rid of this position that Anarchid has in the center, or find a way to avoid it. The problem is Anarchid basically has this straight line from their base. They basically, from their base, through this firebase here, and they can just go wherever from there. That's the problem. So while it is possible for Anarchid, for Aquaman to go around Anarchid's big defensive position in the center, that big defensive position in the center, unless it's actually cut off, like unless this plateau is taken by Aquanim, is still going to be a staging area. And Aquanim still needs to get it somehow out of the way. At the same time, the size managing to deal with this expansion as well, getting rid of one of the conjurers, the other conjurer still managing to live, managing to cloak, but the scythe's not even looking for it. Still, the caretaker did live, so Aquanim did not lose much in the way of reclaim. They did lose something in the way of territory control, but even then, they have their second conjurer. They were prepared for the worst. This is very prudent planning on Aquanim's part here. And also with the air, the, the planes coming in. The Ravens, why not? Just bomb out one of these. Bomb out one of the sides or bomb out one of the Lotuses. Make your, make up your mind. Dang it. Oh, there we go. Getting the Lotus. Actually, the Lotus doesn't... No. Oh, whoa, what? How? Let's deal... Oh, right, they deal 800. Why do I think they deal 400 damage? Silly me. Of course, the problem being that this Banshee is coming in and Thunderbird to try to deal with the Banshee, not managing to actually do anything. But the Warriors are dissuading the Banshees. However, with that, we should be seeing some Swifts coming up very shortly. Or, I would expect we would, but we aren't. In fact, I can not going for Swifts or Hawks at all. What? Or really any... I mean, okay, the Warriors are definitely effective against the Banshees. Although that is distracting them from the Glaives, allowing the Glaives to get rid of them. So Akinem is still having a hard time holding on to this. And with all that Reclaim exhausted over here in the Northwest... This is, once again, Anarchid's game to lose. Anarchid has the advantage... Now, Akinem trying to send some strike forces around the side, trying to harass where they can. I don't expect they're going to be able to stop units from coming through from the main base through the defensive emplacements. On top of that, Anarchy just has a strong army already deployed. So it's rather difficult to get through that, let alone to get behind it and stop any further units from coming to the front lines. So Akinem, this appears to be their final push going in to try to get rid of the commander, trying to just barrel down everything that's been set up at the front. And with that, if they succeed, that actually should be very effective. The problem, of course, being that this this swarm of banshees here, it's not doing a great job of inspiring confidence for Aquinum, I'm sure. However, the Thunderbird is doing a great job of inspiring confidence, managing to open up basically everything here and disarming the Razor, so the Razor's done. Good luck trying to take that territory. At this point, Aquinum actually does have quite a bit more territory invasion success than Anarchid. As well, we have we have gremlins coming in here to help out with the banshees should they come around. Not enough to be a real threat, but enough to be a bit of a nuisance. And with a razor as well, that should be a that should dissuade slightly. And in fact, it is. Anarchid being careful, they're not going to go for the suicide mission to get rid of the razor, not yet anyway. And I could have managing to almost secure their side if they get rid of this cliff, this stinger, especially the stinger. If they got rid of the stinger or stingers plural now, they'd probably be okay. That would give them enough of an opening that they should be able to get in. But with two stingers, that's going to be difficult. The first one, not quite getting stunned. Ooh, no, not quite getting stunned out. Everything else around getting stunned out, but not that one. And these Banshees running it, which... This could be their death, actually. This could get rid of them. The Warriors dealing all the damage, getting rid of all the Banshees. The Rapier still being a pain. But with the first stinger down, and the Razor about to go down as well, that could open things up quite nicely for a Thunderbird strike again. Wherever that is. Ah, oh, but no! Never mind, Aquanim losing all their army in the process. Dealing a lot of damage to Anarchid, but not succeeding at getting rid of Anarchid's force. Too many size, too many rapiers. The Banshees are all gone, but the reclaim is entirely Anarchid's. None of it is under Aquanim's control, and Aquanim's gonna have to fight for it immediately to get it back, and they don't have the army to do so. Follow-up strikes right now are gonna be risky, if not suicidal. Which sucks. Basically, Anarchid has, what is it, 2,000, at least 2,000 medals, more than that. They've been reclaiming heavily. Like, right now, they've got 30 build power, or no, 40 build power reclaiming all the stuff. 
That is huge. They can get... Okay. Couple Conjurers are going down, so the Warriors are managing to take some revenge. Stop Anarchy from being quite so obscene with con with taking all of this metal. But there's still three Caretakers that are having a field day, just eating up everything on top of the remaining Conjurers. There's still well, 20, 20 Reclaim right now, which is reasonable compared to what Anarchy was doing before, but only because of this Lotus here. So that's the thing, is Anarchid just has all the economy in the center, all the metal in the center. Their reclaim belongs to them. It's possible for Akron to take some of the reclaim off the edges here, but that would be extremely risky. At the same time, though, there are only two Rapiers left, and also Strikeforce coming into the back. Akron actually possibly managing to break what I was talking about before, where they're managing to get behind and deal with this stuff. If they get rid of the power infrastructure, this could still do the trick. These wind gens, not... Actually, not nothing. Not nothing at all. We're doing quite a lot, in fact. If these, As long as these glaives can be prevented from stopping the assault. And it looks like they are indeed. The rapier is still being a bit of a problem, though. All that needs to happen is the power infrastructure needs to be destroyed. As long as the power infrastructure isn't powerful enough, Anarchade can't use the reclaim as effectively. Granted, they can still use it at a moderate effectiveness for longer. But they can't use quite as much as they were before. So that puts a bit of a cap on Anarchid's economy at this point, at least. However, they are still getting a lot of reclaim. With the proxy shieldbot factory, well, not even proxy, this is basically their base. This is a forward base. I mean, if Akronim manages to break this down at this point, I would say they've won the game. And I don't see Akronim easily managing to break this down at this point. Does manage to at least re-secure the southeast, stopping Akronim from having a complete domination over the south or the, over the eastern side of the map but even then all this reclaim anarchid took it and while Akronim did manage to reduce the energy economy that anarchid had to at least mitigate some of the problems that would come up from all that reclaim not sure it was done in time however i think this is going to be a question of tactics these two warriors here should be stunned out pretty short no not even not gonna go for that A combination of effective raids from Aquinum should be able to take this game back. And perfect Thunderbirding! So those two warriors are... Well, one of them, that one's dead. The second one should go down fairly shortly. And at the same time, the size decided to commit suicide. Because why not? They were sick of life. And they threw, they threw it all away. However, that warrior is not dead yet. So the Glaives need to be careful. But Anarchid has taken... That southeast base there, and at the same time, Aquinum not quite able to take the northwest. No conjurers are in the northwest, which is a bit of a problem, for obvious reasons. Or cranes, for that matter, actually. Cranes could go over to the northwest as well, and in fact, one of them is. So as long as that happens, it should be fine. And another Thunderbird Strike is going to hit the... It does! It does hit the most relevant one. The most relevant warriors down the glaive should be able to take care of all the warriors... That is huge! That's a lot of money thrown away right here in this one fight. Most of these actually thanks to the Gremlins. The Warriors were simply kept out of there to avoid dealing any damage, but the Glaives dealt with them effectively. At the same time, Akronim able to take out some of that expansion over the west of the immediate west of that fight. The Gremlins are finally in large enough numbers that air forces aren't going to be effective. Anakin's Shieldbot Factory being turned into the Shield... well, Thug Law Shield Ball. No surprises there. Still building more Banshees, though, apparently. At low priority from the looks of it, but yeah, building a lot more Banshees. So this might be a bit of a problem going forward for Anarchid. The only thing is there's nothing here reclaiming, and Anarchid still has control over the southeast. So one good... I mean, the commander's going over there. Commander and a couple of three Conjurers, there's still enough reclaim to be scary if they go over to the southeast. And they most certainly are. And there's control of that. Like, Anarchid still has control of that area. So that metal, while it was lost almost entirely by Anarchid, is going to go back to Anarchid. Which sucks for Aquinum, but at least they didn't lose too many units in the process. And they did manage to take back this metal extractor. Here comes the Thunderbird to try to deal with this whole shield ball, and... Does manage to spot the commander at the same time, so there's some knowledge of what's going on, what Anarchid's trying to pull. And Aquinum, are they going to go for the counterattack? That's the real question. I don't think they're going to try. There's that Stardust there. That's too scary. That's not going to be dealt with easily. Not without judicious use of a Thunderbird to get rid of it. There's nothing else. I don't know if... 
Does eh, Akram's got to know about? No, Akram doesn't. Akram knows there's something there. Probably assumes his defense, but doesn't know that it's in fact a Stardust and basically a wall as a result. However, Anarchist Commander, getting someone out of position, there's nothing to defend it, but at the same time, it's a question of can... Oh no, if Akinem attacks it, actually, there's nothing to defend it. These two two warriors, not enough against all this, particularly against the Zeus's. Two warriors would not be enough. And Aspis is in play. Is there a Felon coming up? There is indeed a Felon coming up. That is the final piece of that little army there. That little combo machine. But Anarchid... Okay, Akinem would rather... Akinem way too... Way too scared of this. Like, they could win. They could have killed Anarchist Commander right there and stopped a lot. Actually, killed Anarchist Commander and all these conjurers, preventing a lot of economy from being constructed. They had more than enough army to do so. I think they're concerned about the fact that Akron is going to be attacking. Sorry, Anarchist is going to be attacking from other sides. Ooh, nice Wolverine bomb there. I think they're concerned about flanking. But that, or there's concern about the fact that there might be more behind there that they're not aware of. And I guess that kind of makes sense. But that was an opportunity. That was a golden opportunity that was lost. Unfortunately. So Anarchid able to reclaim all what was lost there. Which, like I said, was pretty much all Anarchid stuff. Some Aquanim stuff, mostly Anarchid stuff. So retaking the southeast. And at this point, Aquanim is going to go over to the southeast now, after all the reclaim's been taken. Which is curious, Tommy, but I think they were just a little bit cautious. I, I don't totally blame them. I mean, it makes sense to be cautious. You are still at an economic disadvantage. You don't want to be throwing away units if you don't have to. And if you give your opponent a bit extra reclaim, that sucks. But it's better than giving them loads of metal to reclaim. Remember, that was Anarchid's unit. That was those are Anarchid's forces that are being reclaimed. Akram didn't donate anything, and they probably don't want to. And for that matter, I mean, the thing is. One thing I would say Aquan really needs to do is start bringing some, uh, they, I was about to say, they should do this, and they have. Bring some Conjurers with them. Take the Reclaim as it falls. I mean, there's loads of Banshees that are falling. As they fall, just eat them up. Or Rapiers as well. Like, as everything falls, reclaim it. That'll help a lot for Aquanum's economic position. The one downside, they aren't actually building anything, or at least the Caretakers... Why are the Caretakers not doing anything? They're they're so focused on helping the Clokybot Factory, they aren't helping out the Heavy Tank Factory as it's building up pillagers, this could cost Akronim the game. Like, given how close the armies are right now, and the fact that they do really need the pillagers to help deal with the defenses that are there, and also they had a Reaper coming in as well. Like, there's so much more they could build up, but they're accessing metal because these caretakers are not helping, and Akronim doesn't notice. Like, all this stuff is not helping. Now, finally, with Akronim building this up here, the caretakers will actually help out building up the Zeus, and I think Akronim might have noticed that the caretakers weren't helping out the heavy tank factory. Nice tick, by the way. But yeah, this thing to bear in mind, if you ever manually tell a caretaker to build something, or to assist something, and you don't give it a stop order later on, it is going to wait until that thing and that thing alone is acting before it actually does anything. And it looks like the felon has, in fact, gone down. However, this is still a pretty scary shield ball. Or would be if it weren't for the fact that it just got stunned out, but it will after a few seconds. Like, three seconds, it'll be back. And it wasn't fully stunned out either, so that's not effective. Did manage to scare it away, though. Anarchid falling back. Anarchid actually falling behind economically. Aquanim's economy right now, not even reclaim-based. This is all territory. They've been taking territory as they've been fighting Anarchid. And Anarchid, so focused on this center base that they have, didn't quite manage to deal with all this raiding going around the sides. And while not a whole lot of raiding was successful, I mean, clearly the, the glaives tried. Aquanim did detect that Stardust and did die. They found out the Stardust existed. The hard way. But at the same time, the center, that is where the meat of this whole fight has been going on. That is the main thing. And like I said, if Akram can take this down, they win. And that's never been more true in this game than it is now. Because at this point, Anarchid's focusing all their production here. I mean, they're building Thunderbirds, but they basically have... Sorry, it's Akram. They're building some Cloakybots, but they're almost entirely focused on the Shieldbot Factory. The Cloakybot Factory... Actually, never mind. It's getting more build power. What am I saying? Oh, no, 11 to there... Yeah, five to here. So you know, Anarchid's focusing kind of on both, but still. Shieldbot Factory is the forward factory. Glugibot Factory isn't doing much. Aquanum... Aquanum just needs to find a way to bowl this over without dying. That's all. If they can get through the Shield Ball, and where's the Thunderbird? The Thunderbird should be coming around. There it is. Once the Thunderbird gets rid of the Shield Ball, that... 
Should see a counterattack. Ooh, not quite. The tridents. Well placed tridents from Anarchid there to stop that from happening. And no ticks on the ready either. If there were a couple ticks, they'd probably die anyway, so it's not a big deal. The outlaws do screen for ticks. There's no reason really to use them. All at the same time, enough firepower regardless. And there comes the Thunderbird, trying its best. Does stun out a fair amount of units, at least. But unfortunately, in, in its death throes, as it tends to do as it dies firing, it got a bit chaotic. Didn't manage to stun everything. Did manage to scare away Anarchid and Aquinum with the economic advantage they have. As long as they manage to convert that into production, which they aren't completely doing. They need a few more caretakers. Not sure what Anarchidum's... Why Aquinum's not focusing on their main base? They just went back to it, but they're not focusing on it in terms of building up the infrastructure needed to really use all of their economy. Although they do have the a proxy amphib plant on top of everything they have so far, getting a bunch of ducks to try to help out with further raiding. I mean, at least it'll get rid of the glaives. And now the shield ball for Anarchid. If those tridents go down, or even... Oh, that, that one shield. I mean, the thing is, the shield's not really doing a whole lot. As long as the, if the gremlins could just hit the tridents, it would be no problem. And now the tridents getting out of the protection of that shield. Unwise move. Not hugely unwise, but kind of unwise. Ah, unfortunately, some sites getting scared off, but still managing to do some damage. But Aquinum finally with that reclaim over to the southeast. Managing to reclaim everything they destroyed earlier with those warriors over to the southeast. Finishing off everything that Anarchid has, and this should close out the game. Aquinum managing to pull this back. Basically thanks to very careful play. I mean, I mentioned before, they're playing carefully. They don't want to throw anything away, and that's... Even now, they really don't. It's still not over. Like, I'm acting like it's over. That's that's not true. There's still the possibility of it turning around. And these sides are definitely trying their level best to do so. And, oh, that's helpful. Aquinum's still able to get a fair amount of reclaim from that southeast, though. So that southeast is still in a decent enough position. Shield Ball has been broken up. Anarchid's pace here is going to be a pain to deal with. The Tridents are still around, too, so Wyverns can't really get in that effectively. At this point, Tactical Nuke Silo, or Missile Silo, rather. Probably going for Infernos, not for, for Tactical Nukes, not for ESs. But I haven't seen a Missile Silo in a long time. I thought they were just completely out of the meta, but no, apparently people still sometimes build Missile Silos, and at this point, that makes a lot of sense. Because what else are you going to use? Air units will get torn apart by anti-air. Ground units can't easily get through all the shield ball. Just burn them from a distance. Or at least that would be the case if Aquinum actually started building them. They seem to be a bit distracted here by this fight. But once Aquinum starts to actually build that, then we should see this base go down pretty quick, as everything just burns. And Anarchid dealing quite a bit of damage here, getting rid of a lot. Actually, this this missile silo might not, not even be able to do anything. Okay, never mind. It's good. We're it's back in position. Aquinum's not going to lose that easily. Anarchid, what do they have right now? They have, they have some warriors coming in. Then the shield ball continuing to be built up, continuing to go with further harassment with the shield ball over to the northwest side of the map to try to break up everything Aquinum's built up over there. Proxy amphib plant and the few metal extractors that are over there. Actually, come to think of it, not few, a lot of Aquinum's economies over here, come to think of it. There's easily 12 metal per second just in this corner. And Aquinum is starting to take the southwest, sorry, southeast as well. But the southwest side, by their main base, has to be retaken. And Anarchid, once again, with loads and loads of reclaim, as always, loads of reclaim, taking that Reaper and putting it into the recycling plant, turning it into much more useful living units rather than a rather useless dead unit. And at the same time, here's the Shieldbot factory. I mean, this is the Shieldbot, Shield Ball Assault. Aquinum really only has so much time. They are not using... Why did you build this? Why did you build a missile silo if you're not going to use it? Aquinum, come on. You could have had this game by now. Build a couple Infernos and win. I just... Ugh. Must have forgotten they were building the missile silo. It's just... I don't get that. You built the thing. At least hotkey it or something. Like, put it on a control group or something. And then when it's done... Or not even when it's done. It's 0k. You can do it when it's... When you first start building, you can just set up all the queues. I don't get that. Like, Aquinum... I don't know if they got tired or stopped paying attention or still focused on the fight. They forgot that they had built a thing. It's just... You don't have to remember. 
Like, Zero K is not a game where you have to remember that you built something and then the instant that construction is done, you then go back. You can queue during production of the structure. I don't get this. Anarchid should have lost by now. Like, Aquanim's got a massive economic advantage. Anarchid's army is relatively scary, but Aquanim has tools to get rid of it. And Anarchid's none the wiser regarding them. There's no Strider Hub being built. There's no other missile silos being built. There's nothing, like, no silencer or anything being built. It's just Aquanim's not building up anything to do with the missile silo. They were kind of wasting money on the missile silo, getting a bunch of Reapers, which is okay, and the Thunderbirds, which is good. But a good Inferno or two, or just a Shockley even. Actually, Shockley would be ideal. Get a Shockley and just stun out the Shield Ball. Like, why not? There's no reason not to. A Shockley would finish this. So I don't, I don't understand this at all. I feel like Akron is playing with one hand tied behind their back right now. Although, on the other hand, the Thunderbird does manage to come in, finally getting rid of the Shield Ball. So at least that's something. The Shield Ball is gone. Aquinum will be able to get in, probably into this space, and finish off, come to think of it. Sides are doing a great job dealing with them, though. Or at least would be if the Sides came in, although that would be a suicide mission at the same time. But over the eastern side, Anakid's still managing to hold off Aquinum's advances. And going... Okay, that's what the Sides are for. Going into the main base, dealing with the decoy missile silo, because I can't think of what else it is right now. It's not doing anything. Anarchid, however, ooh, getting quite a lot of reclaim coming in from the, well, from the southeast. Gonna lose a lot of glaze, but those, those conjurers, all those conjurers reclaiming around the map, Anarchid has been relentless with the reclaims, and it has paid off so often. And now the sides coming here, nothing's stopping them. There's nothing stopping these sides. Anarchid's gonna be able to take this game. Like, right now, Anarchid's won the game. Probably, possibly. They might have won the game. If they win the game, it's because of these sides. And it's because nothing was set on fire, even though there was all the opportunities for fire. Or on lightning, despite all the opportunities for lightning. Like, I don't know if Akram's going to throw in the towel. I, f I think they might. I they don't have a whole lot on the field. They lost a lot of units during that... Well, during the assault in this base. They didn't stun anything out. They didn't... They aren't using anything that they really have, other than if you... They have the Thunderbirds, which are kind of nice for support, but one of them just went down again. Another one just went down. Which is why I figured they went for the Missile Silo to stop it. I know I'm harping on that, but they built a thing and spent 600 metal on a thing. Spent a minute's worth of metal building a thing. And aren't using it. And it's the exact thing they need right now to take this game. Like, it is the thing that had they been using it regularly up to this point, they'd have won. Instead, they're about to lose. And they clawed it back, too, which kind of sucks. But I think, like, I mean, they might have a chance if they use the Reapers intelligently, just get in here, maybe. It's just very difficult for them to do anything with this sheer, with the small number of units they have. The advantage that Anarchid has army-wise, despite the economic advantage in Aquanim's favor, that's pretty much just being used so that Aquanim can throw bodies into the meat grinder and still stay in the game. Anarchid has to be more careful, but Anarchid is reclaiming so much, every single fight goes in Anarchid's favor because Anarchid takes the medal. They got... Eight workers, or seven at this point. They got, almost, they got over half a dozen conjurers wandering the map, reclaiming rapidly, just hoovering up everything that they come across because they can, and they should, and that's right, and they're playing it well. And Aquanim coming in, dealing some damage, getting some harassment, which is always good, but these conjurers, a bit of fire. If an Inferno just dropped on these conjurers, they'd be dead, and that'd be most of Anarchid's economic machine with them. Because this is Anarchid's economic machine. This is the strongest part of Anarchid's economy, are these eight conjurers. If they die, Anarchid loses. If they live, Anarchid will probably win. And Akonim, despite the fact that they are playing, like, kind of with an arm behind their back, are managing to reclaim this, thanks to a few good raids around the side, careful uses of the units. I mean, they do have the metal advantage, they do have the production advantage, they are still able to rebuild faster. As long as they don't lose units, they will gain an army advantage. If they lose units, then, of course, these eight conjurers will just take everything. And it looks like Aquanim's setting up for a flanking assault to try to finish off Anarchid. Anarchid, I don't see really having any major plans to get out of this other than simply survive as long as possible. They're playing heavy defense. They are building up to a felon ball. Building another, th another shield ball. 
they managed to get that setup that could do the trick. But the problem is that they still have to get it set up without dying, and Aquinum does have a lot of tools to deal with that. And getting a Dante as well, deciding to go for that. I mean, they can. It would work. What are they reclaiming? Oh, there's a rape here at the bottom of the sea. So yeah, I mean, that is that is one way of going about it, I suppose. But now the shield ball is, well, it's been exposed. Not ready, though. It wasn't actually prepared in time, but still, this Reaper will probably go down. A couple glaives coming to try to... Oh, the Reaper's fine. Glaives will try to save it, and Anarchid moving away. Anarchid does not want to lose units. They're probably well aware they have an economic disadvantage, and they should be careful. They have been playing very careful in this engagement, and has been working out. That's what they want to do. Play careful. Play careful, don't die. Keep units alive. Now, like I said, if Aquinum keeps doing that, then Aquinum gets ahead. Like, Aquinum gets ahead if both players do that, but... If Akinum gets careless, then Anarchid can get ahead that way. Also because of all those Conjurers. Actually, how many are there right now? Oh, there's only six right now. A couple of them have died. So Akinum managing to get a little bit more... Not, not expanding as much as they probably could. I think they're just waiting for the Dante to be done. Like, once that Dante is done, I think that's when they're just going to go, Well, okay, I've taken the game now, and then walk it in. And maybe they have. I mean, Anarchid, trying to rebuild where they can. Can't really rebuild everywhere, though. It's kind of hard to find places to rebuild, honestly. Hey! A missile! Finally! We set the missile silo being used. Akunum finally firing off an Inferno into Anarchid's base. Does manage to shut down a bit of the power infrastructure. Doesn't manage to hit any of the Conjurers, but still, damage dealt. Finally get to see the missile silo being used. Awesome! Now, Akinum should be able to defend their main base, no problem. And going in for the assault. Got rid of the Stardust, too, which is quite useful. If they want to send in any supplementary raider units, any glaives or anything. But they don't have a much, that much of an army to work with this. And I don't see them firing off another Inferno. They are not focusing on building up Infernos. They are really focusing on this Dante here. Because, I mean, one good Inferno right here, right on these Conjurers, finishing them all off, that would be a problem. That would slow things down immensely for Anarchid. Now, at the same time, Anarchid, are you... Okay, Anarchid's taking... Trying to take the southeast again. Losing a lot of units. Nothing nearby to reclaim. Actually, everything nearby to reclaim belongs to Aquinum. Hey, Aquinum can finally get some reclaim going for them. Get back into that reclaim game that Anarchid has been monopolizing this for most of this game. Of course, when that Dante... Is that Dante is going to get set up? It's still taking a while. It's taking a sweet time to be built up. What is the priority in that thing? Well, mid-priority. Yeah, everything's kind of medium priority. So it's getting, what? 20 build power? 12, 12 build power. Okay, no wonder it's taking so long. Everything's getting split up so much. Essentially, it comes down to the reclaim. If I can get the reclaim in... Hey, there we go. Getting the nice reclaim going. All the workers helping out with the reclaim. So Aquinum is finally getting that setup that Anarchid has had. And that'll probably seal the game for Aquinum. I mean, Anarchid, they had a bit of a shot where they could have gone back in. It looked like they were really pushing Aquinum hard, but Aquinum's managed to rebuild, managed to get a lot of secure positions around the map. Not a lot of secure factory positions, but that's fine. They have a lot of secure economic positions. They have their own firebase to the northwest. A little bit harder to maintain than the one that Anarchid took right at the start of the game. But it's still manageable enough. Aquinum basically has the west side. And it's now taking the southeast somewhat. It's still a little bit difficult to maintain, though. They're not managing to hold it as well as I'm sure they'd like to. And with all these warriors coming in here to try to take the southeast, it's still going to be tough. And Anarchid, they still have the reclaim. They're still getting it. They're still sucking everything up. Although, at this point, at great risk, it looks like all the Conjurers are actually going to die. And like I said, that is Anarchid's economic engine right now. Those Conjurers. Nice Thunderbird, by the way. Getting rid of all the... Or getting those warriors out of the way... And now the Conjurers have gone down. Anarchids lost their... Well, a large chunk of their Reclaim Engine. They haven't lost all of it. But a great deal of it. They also have their own Dante coming up. But it's going to take a lot longer. Seeing as Aquinas is done. And Anarchids has just started. So Aquinum right now... I think with the Dante comes in, will be able to take this game. 
And their army got rebuilt from what they had before. Like I said before, as long as they saved their army, kept it alive, although they are losing quite a few forces here and there, but as long as they kept their army alive or traded favorably or even evenly, they would get ahead thanks to their production advantage. Now, granted, I wasn't taking into account the Dante when I said that, but the Dante also wasn't under construction when I said that. Still, this is kind of proven my point, although, that being said, Aquinum's losing a lot of forces. The Dante is pretty much all they have right now. And these Reapers are being really risky, not moving out of the way, not especially since the Dante is gonna burn them, but it doesn't matter! Aquinum wins the match through Intimidation with the Dante. Very hard-fought match. But manages to take it. I still don't understand why they went for the Missile Silo when they didn't use it that much. They used it once, though. I will retract my initial shock and disbelief at why it was built for no, for seemingly no reason, because it was used. So there is that. I'm curious why what Aquinum was thinking, though, when they built that, or right after they built that. Anyway, Aquinum, wow. Had the economic advantage for most of the end of the game. Like, the first half of the game was Anarchid's economy. Second half, well, actually, you know, first quarter was even. Then Anarchy had a massive economy spike. Then Aquinum's way ahead. Just Aquinum could not keep their army up. And they kept losing forces until finally went, Oh, wait, I should be careful. And that's when their army unit value went up. Because as long as they were careful, they'd gain an army advantage. And how much excess was there? Well, not much. A thousand metal. I forgot to check last game, because there would have been loads last game. So yeah, Aquinum... Quite a bit ahead in terms of metal. Oh, really? Aquinum actually apparently didn't... Really? So according to the graphs, Aquinum killed a lot more than they lost. Wait, what's the metal reclaim? Yeah, Anarchy had loads of metal reclaim bonus. Especially in the center part of the game. Although that was only about 10 minutes worth. For this last 20 minutes, Anarchy still had quite a lot of metal reclaim. I... I don't know if metal reclaim counts to metal income. Nah, it's gotta count. It's gotta count. This is when Anarchid had that ridiculous, like, 50 metal reclaims. Oh, it does count. So it's not gonna manage to make that work. But that was a lot of... That was still a military advantage here, up until this point, and even then it was even. So Anarchid still had a lot they fought with very well for a long chunk of the game. It was only the last few minutes that Aquinum took it back. Anyway, that was one hell of a game. So, let's see. What was the last one I had on deck? Ah, Adansonia between Anakin and Corvus Korax. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that.